saying here. So um, I'm going to talk about entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about youth entrepreneurship. So let's start with some definitions. Eh? We always, I always, I have some students here. They always know. They know that we always start with a definition. So what is entrepreneurship? Eh? Okay. So I mean, entrepreneurship has many. Uh, connotations and uh, people use it uh, liberally. For example, as of yesterday, people are talking about political entrepreneurship. So they call Macron an entrepreneur. Okay, but is this the kind of entrepreneurship we're interested in? No, we're interested more in economic entrepreneurship. So let's look at uh, when you Google entrepreneur. What is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risks in the hope of profit. So business uh, risks hoping for profit. Uh, if, we, if we look a little bit on uh, historically, and I, I mean there is reasons I'm doing this, is uh, the origins of this word come from uh, an early economist, Cantillon, um, uh, from Ireland and uh, French from Ireland. He's talking about the entrepreneur is an adventurer. He's, the entrepreneur is an adventurer who invests in the purchase of goods and materials. So mostly he was thinking of trade. This is the mercantilist uh, era uh, of economics. Now, this is the origin where, uh, of, of the word and the term where Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations, he's talking about the entrepreneur. This is the foundation, Candillon. Um, we have also the Schumpeterian uh, entrepreneur, you know, Schum Schumpeter, uh, creative destruction and so on. So I I I Schumpeter introduces us also to some other elements of entrepreneurship. He's talking about uh, entrepreneurs are not only motivated from, uh, by profit, they're motivated also by, by other in incentives um, that are, that are uh, measuring their success. I was listening... You know, it's, it's very fashionable these days to look at the uh, global world entrepreneurships. They're stars. Okay, so I was listening to a talk of uh, Warren Buffett because there was recently there was this uh, gathering of uh, the investors of uh, Warren Buffett's uh, in investment. And Buffett was saying, you know, uh, you know, Buffett, all the corporations that are under Buffett, uh, Warren Buffett, they're about, they employ about 350,000 employees. And so, so there are corporations run by big uh, CEOs. And Buffett says, you know, these guys are already rich. How do I motivate them? How do you motivate somebody who is already rich? Well, I mean, it's a Schumpeterian entrepreneur. You motivate them by giving them something to do that is interesting. He says, I have to give them something that wakes them up at 6 o'clock in the morning and they go up and, and, and do their business in the best way they can because they have other kinds of satisfaction. So it's not only the financial satisfaction. Now, when we look at uh, uh, economic theories of entrepreneurship, um, you, you can see that it's sometimes they're talking about the outcome of the entrepreneur, uh, of entrepreneurship. So it is, uh, it is, uh, it is a phenomenon. Okay, so you see business, you see startups. So that's that's entrepreneurial activities. But it's also a way of thinking. Okay, you say this person is entrepreneurial. Uh, for example, uh, when they're talking about um, Macron, he's entrepreneurial. You know, he, he created something out of nothing. Uh, he created a movement, and now he's uh, since uh, last night he's uh, the new president of the Uni of, uh, of uh, France, um, the second largest country in in the European Union. Um, um, so, so th th there are these two elements, but. Um, you know, when you look at, uh, at really those, those that uh, research entrepreneurship, and I think I would like to emphasize this very much because this is uh, basically which uh, drives my discussion today, uh, or at least, uh, you know, the, the initiated my, my thinking around this, is that there are two parts in entrepreneurship. There is managerial skills and the entrepreneurial sk uh, spirit. Managerial skills, they can be taught. The spirit cannot. So you cannot make somebody an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur if they are not an entrepreneur. There are some entrepreneurs already sitting in this room. I had one invited in my class. He's going to speak to us today, Michael, Michael Adler. Uh, Michael has the entrepreneurial spirit, like many like him. Uh, you cannot teach that. And, and I think when we're advising policy, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to see what, what is the outcome of this, we have to keep that in mind. There are certain things in entrepreneurship that we can, um, we, we, we can be involved and others we cannot. It's simply there. 
Okay, so we have to know uh, our limits. So I repeat, managerial skills can be taught, but entrepreneurial spirit cannot. Okay, so I mean, talking about entrepreneurs, are we thinking, uh, uh, and in, in this workshop, are we thinking about people like, like, as a, like him, for example, like Bill Gates, worth $87.6 billion uh, as of uh, January 2017? Uh, or are we talking about uh, this guy, the owner of uh, Amazon, uh, worth uh, over 80 billion US dollars? These are all entrepreneurs. Warren Buffett that I already mentioned, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, uh, born in 1984, uh, worth 62 billion US dollars. Um, um, Elon Musk, who wants to take us to the stars and uh, wants to create uh, the electric uh, city. Um, are we talking about Steve Jobs, who we all, we all use or uh, directly or indi indirectly uh, his, uh, his ideas, his products? Or are we, we should go to some entrepreneurs like this. Now, Madeline, uh, you were very, where is Madeline? Madeline, you were very worried about gender balance on this one. So here is some gender balance for you. So here is a female entrepreneur. Uh, this lady, uh, Tabitha Karanja, she is the uh, owner um, of uh, Keroche Breweries um, in, in Kenya. Uh, she took over uh, multinational, uh, and now she's uh, uh, she has 55 percent of market share. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. Um, here is somebody else who we, who would be sitting here uh, talking to you today, but she couldn't come, and uh, that is Mrs. Yvette uh, Ortachi of uh, OJ Green. Uh, she is the founder of this. She was a saleswoman again in Kenya. Okay, and she founded this this uh, company, and what she does is she produces uh, and sells and packages packages and sells uh, green products uh, by contracting farmers. So she's giving employment to farmers. She uh, she evolves uh, high technology. She has created or her company has created a, a, a mobile platform. Farmers receive everyday instructions of what to do. So today you have to water, tomorrow you have to uh, to spray, and so on and so forth. So she's uh, she's taking a lot of the risk. She's taking a lot of the decisions that the farmers uh, have to make. Uh, she has centralized and uh, outsourced, if you want, the the decisions from the farmers to her, with a benefit to the farmers at the end of the day. She al she is also an an entrepreneur, a female. I mean, talking about uh, the, the the gender issue, and uh, using high technology, talking about innovation, and she's also fighting something that uh, that we are all very concerned, and it's one of the uh, development agendas of the of the goals of the uh, development agenda that we're going to talk about. That's climate change, because a big problem in that agriculture in in sub-Saharan African agriculture is affected by climate change. What they do is they're, they're introducing irrigation agriculture, okay, controlled irrigation. And um, so they're already doing it. They're doing it uh, from, um, you know, from using um, um, entrepreneurial skills and so on. Okay, so why are, we, uh, why are we interested in youth entrepreneurship? Why? It's, uh, I'm not going to talk very much about the uh, problems of population and poverty because I'm sure the other speakers are going to talk about this. Okay? Uh, I'm just going to show you some figures, some figures uh, which, um, you know, they tell us, uh, they tell us something. Um, first of all, um, youth age 15 to 24 uh, years old in, um, in, in, in Africa, look at, the, at that uh, red uh, um, line there, um, it, is, it, it is increasing with an increasing rate, actually. So we will have more young people uh, than ever in, in, in Africa. Is this a problem? You know, I, 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 although I have a Swedish name, I come from Greece, and our neighbor, Turkey, um, prouds themselves for being the most youthful country in the region. Okay? So it's an, it's an advantage. Here we're talking about a disadvantage. Well, youth is an advantage. Okay? Um, I got the five-minute sign. So I, I have, some, some, I have some, uh, some figures here that I'm going to jump. I'll, I'll just show you these figures and tell you they're wrong. 
they're wrong. These statistics are wrong. Rwanda does not only have this, this unemployment rate. Governments in, uh, in many countries, especially in that region that we're talking about, either they misrepresent the numbers or they, they, mis they, they, they don't collect the right numbers or they, they misrepresent them. Unemployment, uh, I mean, these are different projections of sub-Saharan Africa. They, 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 they estimate it's 11.8%. It's much higher. I would like you to take a look at these numbers. Uh, these, these are the facts that I would like us to focus on. First of all, people under age 25 in sub-Saharan Africa are three times more often to be unemployed than adults three times more uh, likely to be unemployed. And this subgroup makes 62% of the total population in the region. Okay? 78% uh, uh, of the youth business in the... Uh, but but, but is, is the youth agripreneurship, as I call it here, the yaps, the new yappies, eh? is, is, is this the solution? Well, you know, our evidence so far, we don't have very much evidence, but our evidence so far shows that 78% of youth business in Angola, for example, have created up to five jobs. However, in Malawi, 88% of the youth business do not even create additional jobs. So we have, we have uh, conflicting evidence there. What do, does youth entrepreneurship do and how do they contribute? They also don't use technology. They don't use uh, new technology. As, as, uh, as we would expect, okay? Now, um, why, why do they fail? There's 10% of startups fail, uh, uh, succeed. 90% they fail. Of those that they, they, they fail, they say that 47 to 50, I mean, depending on the region, they fail because they simply do not make enough money, okay? So what are we talking about? Um, what is all this about? It all as, as we said, we cannot create entrepreneurs, but we can train them. We can train them. So this is the old saying, teach somebody to fish and then they will never be hungry again. Okay? Um, entrepreneurship in agriculture is very low. It averages about 10%. Okay? Now, studies, th this is a study by the Global uh, Entrepreneurship Monitor and uh, a recent study, 2016, and they, they show the impediments to youth entrepreneurship in agriculture. Insufficient access to knowledge, limited access to land, inadequate access to financial services, difficulties in accessing jobs. So what can we do? And I'm finishing in the, I have two minutes. Okay. So what can we, what we cannot do is to create entrepreneurs. But what we can do, remember one of the impediments is education and training. We can train. We can trace that those that they have the entrepreneurial spirit, they will select themselves. We can train them, okay? Because we know how to train people. We're universities. I'm talking now uh, wearing my, my, my SLU badge. And uh, we can train students that they have the entrepreneurial skills. And I have some programs there that we can discuss later. Uh, and we can train the trainers. That's what we can do. We can... Uh, another impediment was limited access to markets. What can we do about this? Well, we are researchers and policy advisors. We can advise governments on policies and uh, on how to develop institutions that enable uh, access to markets. And also, we should envisage a university that is involved. Universities should be involved. We should not just stay on our ivory tower. And here is the Gaia model that the uh, Roof Forum and, uh, in, in, um, in, in Africa is, is using where universities are engaged, the f students, students are involved with farmers, uh, and students are involved in creating even business. Okay? And um, so the university there is involved. And we have to look at this model um, uh, because uh, also, uh, another thing that we can do by doing this is because we also can learn. We can learn. And I think I have learned more by going to Africa and looking uh, at these universities and looking at how the students are involved. And I have learned a lot, and I'm sure we all can learn a lot, because in some of the things that they're doing, they're ahead of us. Okay? And finally, I just want to, to, to emphasize this. Um, you know, um, my, my kids always tell me, you know, if, if, if you know so much about economics, how come you're poor? <laughs> and, and I tell them, you know, I don't know, you know, economists don't know how to, they cannot tell you how to make money, but they can tell you how to spend. So, I mean, I can tell you all how to spend uh, seed money.
That's that's my job, and and I think uh, if 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 there is something that I would like to emphasize also is this. I mean, there are some low-hanging fruits there, post-conflict areas. The results in these areas are very very high. They're very high and they're very quick because they they need it. And I have here, and this is this is just the last uh, thing, Carolina, uh, and and this is. You know, this, this is a, a result of a case study of a vocational school in uh, in Somaliland. Uh, they're they're running this program um, of uh, training uh, um, uh, training experts in, in in livestock. The last three years, from all the graduate, all of them have a job. No one has left the country. Some of them are even entrepreneurs. There is no migration from there, and there is no terrorism. And I think that's the message that we should uh, we should uh, we should get. Thank you very much. I think I was on time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kostas.